Okay, we are in the book of Acts. We are now in chapter 16. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do a review. Uh, actually, the last time we had was right before uh, Christmas. So we had a nice break. And uh, so we're back at it now. We're going to just charge on through and uh, get some good information regarding uh, this wonderful book, this wonderful uh, 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 lessons through Acts. Um, so our quick review, uh, the book of Acts describes the history of the church and it was written by Luke. This is in some places they call it, uh, you know, you know, I have first and second Corinthians, first and second, uh, John, you, this is first and second Luke because <laughs> he has the, the written by him, but it's actually part two. Uh, the real church is a collective body of believers. And the body of believers are called out of the world and into a transformational relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So the key elements of the book of Acts are the church and the Holy Spirit. It starts out with the Holy Spirit now coming to dwell with men permanently. We know in the First Testament, um, the Holy Spirit was still very active. The Holy Spirit would come and dwell a person to perform a duty, a responsibility, something that God wanted as this person uh, of flesh and blood to do, but then the Holy Spirit would return. Now the Holy Spirit is here and it dwells with us and it is here for us, for all who believe. So doing a quick review that we went through in chapter 15, uh, Acts 15 is about the continued development of the church, the body of Christ, and the challenges that came with it, growing pains. Uh, Acts 15 has 41 verses. It's divided into two primary sections. One is addressing the false teaching in the church regarding circumcision. And two was addressing conflict among believers. You know, we had the conflict with Paul and Barnabas mm -hmm. and conflict with John, Mark, and Silas. So we have, uh, even in the church today, there is a lot of false teaching that's going around. Even right now, there's a lot of stuff that is being put out on the airways. Uh, I believe a lot of it is total distraction uh, from us keeping our minds geared towards continuing to worship and honor God and doing his will. So you got a lot of things that are just being spewed out that cause harm to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And there is is there are still a lot of churches that have a lot of division. There's a lot of conflict. Uh, people allow their personal feelings to come into play as opposed to doing what the Spirit of God says do. You know, we want to be heard, we want to be seen, we want to be acknowledged, but it's not about us. It's all about God. Amen. Anytime it's about us, then there's a problem because us is the flesh. Mm -hmm. We need to let the spirit arise in us so that there can be no conflict. Mm -hmm. We're all on one accord. If we're all doing what God says do, if we're all part of that body of Christ, we're all part of that oneness then there can be no room for conflict. When we step outside of the spirit, and we start doing our own thing, that is where we have conflict. Yes. Are there any questions over what we went through in chapter 15? It was a good, very good chapter. I enjoyed it. Okay. If there's not, let's continue to go on. Now we are in chapter 16. 16 focuses on Paul and Silas and their spread of the gospel in key places, including moving into Europe. I know how this gospel got spread around the world. So Paul and Paul and Silas, they were not just in the Asiatic countries. Now they're moving on up into the European realms, spreading the gospel. Uh, Acts 6 has 40 verses and has six primary categories. We're going to study all six. Timothy joins Paul and Silas. Paul's vision to Macedonia. Lydia's family baptized at Philippi. Paul and Silas beaten and imprisoned. The jailer and his family are saved. 
and Paul's boldness to the leaders in Philippi. These are the six things we're going to be covering today. So let us begin. We have Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Timothy joins Paul and Silas. Starts out, then he came to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed. But his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek, mixed marriage. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. Verses 1 through 5. So in Lystra, Paul continue, connects with Timothy, and he joins their missionary tour. His mother was a Jew, but father was Greek. Paul had him circumcised in honor of Jewish customs. Now remember, he's already said, we've already talked about, that circumcision was not the pathway to yeah. salvation, but because there was an honor among the Jewish community, and he still wanted to maintain his statue so he could continue to preach to the Jews, he went ahead and circumcised Timothy more so that he could be accepted to the Jewish community because his father was a Greek. Do you think it was because that he was going to be in leadership, that that's yes. why they had him circumcised? Yes, yes. Not only just, not only just to, to be able to uh, 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 be accepted, but because of the type of person that Timothy was, I believe Paul really knew that down the line, that's why he asked him to join the missionary tour. Down the line, he was, he was, he was about to be a mentor to Timothy, prepare him for leadership, and get him into the right frame of mind because he did have Jewish heritage. And he did not want the Jews that he was going to be teaching and preaching and leading to have anything bad to say about him because of his father being a non-Jew. So let's just circumcise him, get that part out of the way, and we can go on and do what we need to do. Okay. Yes, very much so. I believe he really understood that Timothy was going to be somehow going into leadership. Timothy was young in the faith, but Paul developed him. Yeah. Much like Barnabas developed John Mark. Yep. Wow. This was a mentoring relationship. There you go. Very good. Then again, every person needs to be a Paul, a mentor, and every person needs to be a Timothy, a mentee. You didn't mute yourself, right? This is so important that we understand this part right here. Everybody needs to be able to help someone else understand the workings of Christ. Then everybody, we all still need someone else to continue yeah. to help us understand. That's right. That's help right. Us to lead. Help us to be prepared to receive more word so that we can take it on down through. We make disciples, but we still need to be disciples. That's right. Anytime you think that you're already there and you don't need nobody else and you don't need nothing else to be said to you, you got a problem. Because <laughs> you don't know it all. I surely don't know it all. I need all the help I can get. Amen. But I also know that there are those that I need to be putting up under and boosting up and helping up and teaching up and giving what they need so that they can be successful and prosperous in the ministry for Christ. Amen. Any questions on one through five? <laughs> Very good. Okay, this is six through 10, Paul's mission to Macedonia. And when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, 
They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bethania, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. I'm going to kind of stop right here. It's so cool that you understand that there's a lot of things we may want to do, but the Holy Spirit hey! will not always allow us to do what we yeah. want to do or go yeah. where we want to go. That's right. There's things that we have in our mind that we believe is what God wants, but the Holy Spirit, if that's not in the plans of God, the Holy Spirit will not allow you to do what you need to do or what you think you need to do. He's going to direct I and guide you. I said all the time, a man plans, God laughs. God laughs. You got nice. that right. So we have, and we also have to be uh, attuned to the to Holy God. Spirit to know yeah. the Holy Spirit is interjecting for us yes. and directing us in a different direction and not get upset because we can't do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We do mm -hmm. what God wants to do. Anytime we want to get upset, and and then stop working for the for the for the for the uh, spirit of God, then we're in flesh. Visa and that's what gets us in trouble, Pastor. That's what gets us in trouble. There's your conflict. Yeah, gets us in trouble. More people leave because they don't get what they want. Mm -hmm. That's a petulant child mm -hmm. who sticks their bottom lip out. I don't get what I want. Now, nah, Holy Spirit knows more about you than you know about you. Amen. And knows how to get you where you need to go. So verse 9, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Beautiful. The Holy Spirit can clear, was clearly active in determining where and by whom gospel message should travel at a particular point in time. Not to uh, Bethany. Our time is all messed up. Asia. <laughs> Bethania. Sorry. Bethania. Asia. Macedonia was a Roman province in what is now modern-day Greece. The gospel is now moving into Europe. We're going to hit, remember, we hit Africa in Acts verse 8. So it wasn't just in Asia where they had been before. Now he's taking them to Greece, Rome, Greece, and they've already been to Africa. So it's spreading. Eventually, the gospel would spread to Rome. That's Italy, known the known capital of the world during that time had Roman rule. So here you got Asia, you got Greece, you got Africa, eventually to come to Italy, the European countries. Note, Luke, the writer, joins Paul, Silas, and Timothy in their travels to Macedonia. Want to know how Paul can write, write about all of this? Paul has joined. I mean, uh, Luke, he's one of, he's the writer of this. So he's joined Paul and Silas and Timothy in all their travels, especially to Macedonia, going into the European countries. So he's now got firsthand knowledge. He's writing, taking notes. He's right there. This is where Acts really becomes more, um, I'm going to want to say diverse, but it becomes more prevalent of what is being taught because the writer of this book is firsthand. Any questions? No. Okay. Verses 11 through 15. This is Lydia's family baptized at Philippi. Therefore, sailing from Troyes, we ran a straight course to <coughs> Samothrace. 
and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of the part of Macedonia, a colony. We were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. A certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. While traveling in Macedonia to the city named Philippi, they met a woman named Lydia. Mm -hmm. Lydia worshiped God. She then and her family was baptized and they begged the crew to stay at her house, which they did. Question, uh, before I go further, when it said that she was a seller of purple, do you know what that means? She sold fabrics and stuff? Yes. Exactly. The 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 purple was the Exquisite. sign of royalty. Yeah, exquisite yeah. fabrics. Exquisite. exquisite. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So she just didn't sell just everything any day. She wasn't she, selling cotton. She was selling exactly. purple. Sell, but, but and stuff. She yeah. had a position in this city, like um give me a fashion designer. Christian Dior. Christian Dior. Dior. Uh, uh, she, she, Gloria Vanderbilt. Gloria Vanderbilt. And, and today she would be on the runway. Her her garments would be on the runway. Okay. She was, so, so she wasn't just some everyday normal person. She was well known in the city. She had a lot of prominence because she was the seller of this purple but she was also a believer in God. Amen. She was a worshiper of God, not mm -hmm. God's uh, little g, of God. Mm -hmm. So when she heard all preaching, she and her fa whole family was baptized. And she begged the crew to stay at her house, which they did. Note, no mention of husband or children, but it implies that at least children existed. There are times where the woman must lead their families to the Lord if the husband is unwilling or able. Mm -hmm. I love this. Mm -hmm. And this is so true. <clears throat> yes. Um, uh, people, uh, they want to, the Bible, how can I put this? There is nothing degrading about women in the word of God, all through the word of God. You're going to find women taking positions that God uses them to do his will. Yes. If a man is not there, the women will lead their families to the Lord because their mm -hmm. husband is either unwilling or unable. That's, per that's perfectly said, especially for all the single mothers out there. Oh, so many of them. So many, but but you'll be surprised of the women. I'll take Michelle and I, for instance. Michelle got in the church before I did. She got in the church, she got saved. She's going to church. I had a grown up in church. I wasn't going to church no more. I'm like, man, I don't need to go to church no more. I've done all church. I need to do, I don't need to do no more church. But I felt the call because she was dedicated. And I knew mm -hmm. what being dedicated to God, what that meant. So I started going with her. She, mm -hmm. in essence, led me to mm -hmm. go with her to church. Mm -hmm. One, if she hadn't have done it, I don't know if I would have, unless God did for me what he did for me. I think God would have found another way. He'd have found another way. You were called. 
he would have yeah. found another way. But I don't think, well, this is just my opinion. I don't think it would have had the same Effect. result mm -hmm. as it did mm -hmm. you going first. Same way it was in starting this church. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if my wife says it, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michelle mm -hmm. said, Malcolm, I think it's time for us to start a church. Good God. You mm -hmm. see, I, and, and this, I think it's so important that we understand this. Mm -hmm. Our families are going to be led one way or another, but women are very instrumental in leading their families. There's, there are times when this is to be done. Okay, any it's, questions? <clears throat> Just what you, you said, Pastor. Women have been an instrumental all through the Bible. Oh, yeah, all through, all through. And, first, as you first. was talking about Michelle, it takes me back to Proverbs 31. Because mm -hmm. that woman is off the hook. She's blessed. Oh, I got one. Yeah. I got yes, you do. That's I got what I'm one. trying to say. Michelle is one. a proverb 31 yeah. woman. Yeah, I got one. And that I sister is a bad mama jam. I know, I, I, I know what God the has God, given me. The God, yeah. be, the God oh, yeah. be the glory. Oh, God be the glory. God now, be I know the what glory. God has given me. I know yeah. what she does God even today. My wife is up. Three, two, three o'clock in the morning, she's praying. I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. My wife is up. You know, mm -hmm. I know she covers me. Mm -hmm. She covers this church. She covers you all. Michelle mm -hmm. is a praying woman. And I understand what God has, has given me. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for that. But it's yes. all throughout the word of God. They, I think that women sets the presence. Like I see people like, what is it in that woman? You know, and I think men, when they see their wives, because when I was little, I always used to see the women in the church and not the men. And that used to scare yeah. me as a little girl, yeah. Yeah. you know, because yeah. I saw conflict. But that woman stood on God's word and eventually yeah. he crossed over. And, and, and I think there's the, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember the verse and the chapter of the scripture that does say that the wife sanctifies the husband. Yes. Oh, and she'll do oh. that if he is not able or he is unwilling because they are still one flesh, her belief, she helps to sanctify him and mm -hmm. able to work in a way to help draw him to the yes. Lord. So there's a lot of husbands. There's a lot of men. Yeah, there's a, there's, because of their wives. There's an awful lot of scripture in that um, phase as well, because I remember actually reading one. Sorry about that. I remember actually reading one where it says where it says that either the husband or the wife be either the husband or the wife is somewhere in Matthew. I'm not gonna quote it correctly. I know that, but if the husband is the one going to the church, may the house be holy for the wife may one day follow. And it says the same thing. It says the same thing a chapter later, vice versa. If the yeah, wife is yeah. the one going to church, may the husband follow and may the house yes. be holy. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, happened to women is that we're the more sensitive vessel. Yes. 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 And, and, and we're a little yes. bit more spiritual. Men are, are more physical. And they mm -hmm. got the broke, the bronze. But mm -hmm. women, we, you can walk, a woman can walk into a room and tell if yes. it's good or bad mm -hmm. without saying nothing. Yeah. And that's what God put in us. He put that in us. I could, that I could, discernment. Yeah. That I discernment. Can, I can agree with you because there's plenty of times my daughter Peyton has said something and yeah. she you knows know, she would notice for a sexual. For a six-year-old, she will notice a lot more before me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's a little She's a little lady. It's, that's, that's the part that God took out of us and put in the woman when he created the woman. Mm -hmm. That's why the two have to come together and be one. One flesh, yes. yeah. One flesh, yep. There you go. Amen. All right. This is, chap this is verse 16 to 24. Paul and Silas beaten and in prison. Now it happened as they went to prayer that a certain slave girl 
possessed with a spirit <laughs> of divination, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. This, I got to stop here. This is, this is so wild. Powerful. This girl's got an evil spirit in her, but she, she can't help but to cry out and say, these people are the real deal. Mm -hmm. These men are servants of the most high God. They proclaim the way of salvation. It goes totally against what her masters are making money for. Mm -hmm. There's a change of hearing with this woman. Demons know who God is. They know who God is. They sure do. They sure do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Remember when the one said, Jesus yeah, Paul, Paul I know. Oh, you talking about you talking about Legion when the yeah. seven, Legion no, looks straight at Jesus? Like, are you here to torture uh, me? No, the seven, seven sons of Sceva. He died. They left. Sons, yes, left negative bleeding. Yep. Mm -hmm. All we know. But who are you? Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Demons mm -hmm. jumped on them. They sure did. Sure did. Verse eighteen. Bleeding. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. When her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, Amen. they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. Mm -hmm. They teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Mm. When they had laid many stripes on them. They threw them into prison commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet with stocks. Mm -hmm. So while in Philippi, the crew met a slave girl who was demon-possessed, but she made a fortune for her masters. Paul rebuked the spirit in the girl, and it came out, busted them up. Messed up their money. Yep. No, he rebuked the spirit, not the girl. We mm -hmm. must do the same. Who are we fighting? The spirit on that person. Man, Told say that again. My, my very first teaching assignment. Sure <laughs> was. I, when I had that, that class. I had to get people to understand we're not fighting each other. It ain't the person. It's the spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. When we see things, huh? I could have used that scripture <laughs> earlier today. Oh, we <laughs> need to constantly keep this before our face, yes, before yes. our mind. Yeah, always so because the, the spirit is always going to use a person, flesh and blood <laughs> person, to do things to us. Yep. But we have to understand and realize that in this battle, it's not the person; it's <laughs> the spirit. The spirit on that person. And that's who we should be rebuking is the spirit, not the person. Amen. We don't fight I against I said that one time, Pastor. I For we this wrestle person. not with flesh yeah, and, and blood. blood. Yep. You yep. got to remember that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Amen. The masters were upset, took them to the magistrates, and had them, Paul and Silas only, beaten with rods, thrown into jail in the most secure part of the prison. Mm. Y'all ain't going nowhere. We're putting y'all down. They done messed, y'all done messed with our money. Uh -uh, we can't have this. Any questions? I just think, Pastor, you see this, what we're reading, what these people Paul and Silas went through. They yeah. went through a lot. Yeah. To preach the good news. 
where yeah. their bodies were hurt horribly, just like yeah. Jesus was. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing that I have. To and we get to. upset if we don't get our payday. Right. Exactly. Uh, okay. One of the things I, I want to center on on the scripture was remember, the girl said this first, mm -hmm. but then in, in verse 18, she says, and she did it for many days. So she's following them around. Yes. Yes. She's 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 spitting this out to a time to where it became annoying to Paul. He he and Silas are trying to do a service, they're trying to do a work, but this was not a proclamation of wonderfulness. This was annoying. The spirit was trying to do everything it could to stop them. There it's 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 proclaiming. It's like going ahead of them. Check out these men. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. da -da. And it wasn't that they could enjoy the forerunning or the, I don't know, I'm going to say enjoy, but be confident like John the Baptist was the forerunner of Christ. I was mm -hmm. telling people about who was coming before Christ came. She was like a foreteller, but it wasn't for the joy. It wasn't for, for it was it, it was an annoying issue. And Paul mm -hmm. got tired of it. Okay, mm -hmm. say it once, cool. Say it twice, cool. But every day, all day, you're following us around. You're not even doing your job. Yeah, that's all you're talking. You you're, you're annoying. Spirit, you got to go. You're not trying to do this to do us any good. You're not trying to do this to help 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 the spirit of God to become, you know, a uh, flourishing in the city. You're doing this just to make a scene. You got to go. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the adversary didn't realize what he was messing with. Oh my goodness. Once he left and the guy and the and the mm -hmm. masters understood they no longer had a hold on this girl. Mm -hmm. They no longer could use her or use mm -hmm. the spirit in her. Mm -hmm. They couldn't make their money by uh, 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 causing mm -hmm. the spirit to attack people or give false word to people or get people to believe certain things, fortune telling and all this mess. They're like, uh-uh, nah. Mm -hmm. we, we got, we, we can't use her no more. But we sure won't get these two dudes that, that, that messed up our money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That ain't gonna happen. That's like the mafia. Don't mess with the mafia's money. They're gonna get you. <laughs> that's, what they did. that's what they did. All right. This is verses 25 to 34. The Philippine jailers say. I love how this goes because it's kind of like there's a twist. You we beat you and put you in prison. We're thinking you're gonna be quiet, but look what happens when you are doing God's will. Mm -hmm. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Y'all in prayer. Y'all in jail. You'd have been beat. You thrown in the most secure part of the jail, but yet you guys are praying and singing how singing hymns Ooh, to God. And all the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately. All the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. Gotta stop. This didn't just happen to Paul and Silas. Every prisoner in the joint, this is what happened to. Them. Boom. Mm -hmm. Every prison door opened. Everyone's chains fell off. Woo. And yes. the keeper of the prison awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. See, he did that because he knew that's the punishment for trouble. the prisoners got. Prisoner escapes, it's on you. Prisoner mm -hmm. escapes, you a dead man. Mm -hmm. So instead of him saying, oh my goodness, they're going to kill me, I might as well just end this right now. I ain't letting this happen. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. When he had brought them into the house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in the Lord, and having believed in God with all his household. I found this so interesting. Here's Paul and Silas there in prison. Earthquake happens. Jail cell doors open. Chains all fall off. God's ready to kill himself. Paul says, don't do it. We, we ain't gone nowhere. This man is, <laughs> he is so happy that they're still there. It came over him. Oh my goodness. You guys, I didn't heard word about y'all because this world been saying it all over town. See, that's not in the scripture, but I'm, 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 this is just me. I didn't hear you, you, she didn't say it. You guys are preaching the word of salvation. It's all over town. That's why y'all here. So what must I do to be saved? Tell me. You didn't tell everybody else no. Tell me. She tells them, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You and your household. Amen. So he spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. I this part, and see, I, I, I think it's to me from verse thirty-one to thirty-two. There's a whole lot missing. Really, verse me. thirty to thirty-one, because it says, "So they said, so they said, believe the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household." Then mm -hmm. they spoke. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. So he then took them from the prison and took them home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Just a minute ago, you was about to kill yourself because the prisoners are gone. You going to take them? Wonder what that conversation was. You like. ain't afraid of nothing. See what I'm saying? There's a lot, there's a lot gone here. Yeah. It's where this man, the fear of death and the life to the body is no longer important. The most important thing is now to be saved. Mm -hmm. Life has no rest in there. I ain't worried about nothing else. So, so Can you took, imagine them oh, being beaten? Oh, and then they're sitting there praising God. Oh, and then all of a sudden, oh my oh, goodness. As Michelle just, said, oh yeah, God it, it, plan it, and God has another plan for you. Hey, mm -hmm. look, so I, we, if we think we're going through something and we're in, in the midst of something, you ain't in the midst of nothing. That's right. That's Compared right. Compared to this, this is real deal. It says he took them, took them at, at, at the same hour of, at the night. He washed them mm -hmm. up, cleaned their wounds, and then the whole family at nighttime went and got baptized. They didn't wait till daytime. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Didn't wait till night. We're gonna do this mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. All his family were baptized. Yes. When he brought him in the house. He fed him and he rejoiced, having believed in the Lord God with all his household. So the whole household was there. This was so cool. Group discussion. In verse 25, it tells that Paul and Silas were blank and blank. And at what time? What were they doing? You just singing said and it. praise. Singing, singing and praise. And praying. What time was it? Daytime. No. Midnight. Midnight. <laughs> Nighttime. Mm -hmm. Praying and singing hymns to God at midnight. Mm -hmm. yes. It's dark. In the middle of the night. What miraculous event happened after that? Earthquake. The earthquake happened and all their shackles and chains were loose. You got yep. it. Earthquake shook the prison. All the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Would you not say that was the Holy Spirit? That was oh, the that God. was God all oh, day God. long. If you say oh, that, that God. God. the Holy Spirit. See, now, 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 and I want us to go back to and remember how we started this off. Okay? Paul and Silas wanted to go to Asia. 
The Holy Spirit Thank said you. no. No. We're taking you to Greece. We're mm -hmm. taking you to the European countries. Mm -hmm. They had no idea what they were going to encounter. And they encountered this, which we would probably consider a mess. But God got a plan. Sure did. Yes, and it did. was so awesome plan. He had to, Paul and Silas had to go through some stuff. But being obedient to God and following his will, sometimes <laughs> you're going to go through some stuff. The guard of the prison comes in wanting to kill himself. What did Paul say to him? Afterwards, what did the guard ask Paul? Do not harm yourself. He said, mm -hmm. don't harm yourself. Don't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. So what did the guard ask Paul? How, what must I do, I do to get saved? Do. What do yeah. I need to do to get, to get saved? saved? Paul says, don't harm yourself. Everyone is here. What must I do to be saved? The guard and his family were saved. saved. Lastly, what did you gather from this story? This is just for you. I'm just saying. How we respond to our suffering can help others come to Christ. We find this in 1 Peter chapter 2, 18 to 21. So let's read it. You who are slaves must submit to your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are cruel. For God is pleased when conscious of his will you patiently endure unjust treatment. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow his steps. My yes. Goodness. Man, if only yeah. people actually knew this. It's... Well, you know what, uh, 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 DeAndre? Here's the thing. Whether they know it or not, it's not the knowing, it's the doing. It's the doing, obedience. No, I, it's the I, don't, obedience. I only say that because a lot of people have suggestions. So a lot of people take a lot of context way out of mind. Yes. They say God, when you hear people say God is all good, people honestly really think it's about to be chocolate chips and rainbows when they don't right. understand. Right. You're going to go through some things. Yes. But knowing as long as you made that right decision to do the yes. right thing, regardless of what happens, God, yes. will, God will bless you. And yes, there's a lot of people. The moment something goes wrong. Oh, what did I do? Did right. I do something wrong? Like, no, right. no, you're going to say. Or they want to blame free. God. Or, or they want to blame God. God. Yep, you're right. And I think, you know, and, and the thing is, is, there's a lot of people that do it. Yes. Uh, I, I've done it. You know, without consciously first thinking, oh, God, you're in the midst of this. You know, when you have tragedy or things happen, the, the, the natural fleshly impulse is to question why. Yep. What yep. did I do? Mm -hmm. Why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. But then you have to stop and thank God even for the hardship. Because the Bible says, for we glory in tribulation. in tribulation. Even in the midst of our trouble, we have to give God thanks for it. That's hard to do. He didn't say it would be easy. But once you start doing that, then you know that's, that's what it does. Your, 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 your tribulation works your patience. Your patience, your endurance. Your endurance, mm -hmm. your hope. These are the things in your character. These are the things that work on you to help you become better person mm -hmm. and child of God so that you can bless others with what you know and how you do. Man, this is awesome. Good stuff. Pastor, may I say this to the young man that was yes. just talking? I, I heard what you said and I'm, I'm totally in agreement with some of it, but I'm going to take you back to you. I don't know who brought you in, but there was a tug on you. And a lot of people get that tug and that's the Holy Spirit. And they don't understand, but they know they need to follow that Holy Spirit. You make right. a decision. Either you follow it or you right. don't. 
Right. That is so true, Court. That is so that's, that's what got true. me was a tug on me. I knew right for wrong, but it was something pulling on me. Yes. And this is the thing that of, of what you're talking about, DeAndre, with people. They don't understand. They're they don't they're understand. expecting they're expecting nothing but goodness. They're expecting nothing but flowers and yeah. and, 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 and rainbows and you know soft music and th that's what they expect. When hardship comes, yeah, when trouble comes. Mm -hmm. When things don't pan out the way they want to, then it's a problem. And they can't see God mm -hmm. in the midst of it. Mm, but that's no. what it's saying here. It, it, it says, you know, you, you uh, of course, you don't get any credit for being patient if you're yep. beaten for doing wrong. Mm -hmm. says, but if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. He understands. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God called you to do good. Mm -hmm. Even if it means suffering, just mm -hmm. as Christ suffered for you. Yeah, man. I I, I, I feel you, DeAndre. And that's one of the things of being a pastor and being a leader that we mm -hmm. deal with with people. Because there's an expectation that they have. Yes. And when the expectation is not meant to their satisfaction, they want to lose faith. They stop coming. They don't want to talk to nobody. They don't want to believe God anymore. They want to act what they want to do. They want to go back to old ways and doing old things because God don't love me or God didn't protect me or God didn't move how I wanted him to. No, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. He's not your genie in the bottle. But you get three wishes in the bottle. He's God. And you know yeah. what, Pastor? There's something that you taught me a long time ago. God doesn't do anything that man doesn't do to himself. God is hey. love. He no. don't put any troubles on you. He told you you were going to have these things. His son went through it. Hey. He was a perfect lamb. I've heard this saying all my life. God will not put more on you than you can bear. That is nowhere no. in the Bible. That no, is not scripture. Nowhere found. Yeah. Whoever thought that up, you crazy. Because God That's don't right. put nothing on you. The correct scripture is God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. He will give a way of escape. But with the temptation, he's also made a way of escape so that you can endure it. Yes, yes, yes. So don't people say God put this on you? God, nah, God ain't going to put more on you than you can bear. God ain't putting nothing on you because, because if that's the case and you, and, and you don't bear it, now you're going to blame God. That's right. Because you really didn't bear it. If that was really and the case, it's God's fault. Him giving us free will. There you go. That's exactly right. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's the free will I'm talking about. That's it. That tug. You make a decision. Okay, this is 35 to 40. Paul's okay. boldness to the leaders. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the officers saying, Let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported. These words to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. I'm going to stop here. So he, he took him home. He did what he had to do with Paul and Silas. He got saved, but he did have to take them back to prison. Mm -hmm. Okay? So know that. He's the keeper. He's the He, he didn't want to not only lose his job, he didn't want to lose his life. Yes. But he took them back because he knew God was with them. And also Paul think, said to them, go ahead. I'm sorry, but also think about this. Back then, they didn't have USPS, so it's not like they were let go the next day. Just right. imagine how long they had to suffer before they even got, you before got they even gotten that um, official letter. Yeah, yeah, there you go. 37, but Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly uncondemned Romans and they have thrown us into prison and now do they now do they put us out secretly no indeed let them come themselves and get us out I like that part and the officers told these words to the magistrates and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans ah you did this to Rome you can't do this to Rome then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city so they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. 
When they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. I like it, Paul. Paul's like, look, y'all beat us in the open. Y'all disgraced us. Y'all threw us in prison. And now all of a sudden, secretly, you want to just let us go? No, nah, y'all come down here. You put us in here, you get us out. Come on. So when they found out that they were Romans, now they're scared. Paul oh, reminds me of a little Peter sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rebel. Yeah. So they came and they pleaded. Oh, y'all, please come on out. Get out. Please. Don't just get out. Get out the mm -hmm. city. Don't just get out. Just get the leave. Leave us, leave us alone. Go away. Next day, the magistrates ordered for Paul and Silas to be released. Paul said, no, indeed, not in secret, for you beat up, beat us up openly, Roman citizens. The magistrates didn't realize that Paul had Roman citizenship. Even though he was born a Jew, he was still a Roman citizen. Oh, yep. He went back to Lydia's house and left town. Any questions? All right, so our next lesson is Acts chapter 17 or part 17.